Hey, good morning. Well, at least it's good morning here. Uh, this is Mr. Kelly. I'm going to go over 2010 number one on the FRQs for AP stats. This is a great question that asks about experimental design. They want to check to see if you know what all these terms mean. So it's pretty easy. You just have to know what those terms mean, right? I mean, there you go. So go ahead, pause the video. You can read the question if you don't have it in front of you. And if you need a copy of this question, you can always Google it, right? So just Google 2010 FRQs, AP stats. So this should show up. So the first part of this question, after you read through the experiment, they basically want to give a bunch of garlic to some birds and see if it stops them from eating, right? That's the basis of this experiment. They want to know if you understand what the treatments are. Or in other words, they want to know if you know what the word treatment means. So a treatment is a condition that you impose upon uh, one of the units. Well, we're going to get to that too. That's part two. So let's just get down to these uh, definitions here. The treatments are each of the five concentrations in this experiment. So, you know, what are you changing for each of the units? Well, we're going to give some of them 0%, some of them 2%, all the way up to 50. That is, that is the variable that changes, okay? That's the, that's the condition that we are imposing upon the units. So that is the treatment. Okay, easing up. The units themselves, those are the, I'm going to call them the participants in the experiment. What are participating? And sometimes it's people, sometimes it's birds, sometimes it's plants. But in this particular experiment, it's the European starlings. So those are the experimental units. And then lastly, the response that will be measured. You know, that's where you got to go and you got to measure something. So you got to use, you know, a ruler or you're weighing something or you're counting something in this case. So the response will be the number of food granules consumed by each bird. Okay, that's what they're going to measure. So that's pretty easy, right? We, for part A, I mean, one, two, three, easy as pie. So then the next part they say, all right, here's some data that came from the experiment. So construct a graph. And here's the key. You are looking for linear regression possibility, okay? So we're looking to do some linear regression. We know with linear regression, you need an X and a Y variable, right? That comes from a scatter plot. So we have to make a scatter plot. And they have three rows of numbers here. Notice the last row is just the number of births. That's the same for all of them. I don't need to plot that. What I'm really interested in is how much garlic oil concentration there was and then what the response from that was. So this will be our response variable that we'll put on the Y axis. And then the X uh, will be our garlic oil concentration. So then you have to look at your graph and figure out how to do that. Now, there's no right answer, but we want to use the entire graph and we want to make sure we label each of the axes. So here's our X that should be on the bottom and our Y should be on the side. So go ahead and take some time to do that. And this is what I came up with. Check this out. So we got some garlic oil concentration on the bottom. I had to go from zero to 50, right? So that was easy down here. I counted by fives, that's the scale. And, the, and this is called the explanatory variable, right? So 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way up to 50. I probably, I probably could have doubled that and made this 10, but then I'm counting by two and a halves. I thought that was just, that was suspect, so I didn't do that. Uh, on the y-axis or the response variable, that was kind of tricky for me so to figure it out. So I know I had to go up to 60, so I just started at 20, but you got to be careful because you don't want to imply that your scale is different across your graph. That would be incorrect, right? So I can, in other words, I can't go by like, I can't make this distance be 20 and then this distance be five is, I mean, that's essentially what I did, but you got to put those two lines there. So I'm going to start at 20. You don't, you don't have to start at zero. Students always think you have to start at zero there. Put a little zero right there. But you don't have to start there. I went from 20 to 60. It's spaced it out pretty well. I put the points. I did my best to draw that. Uh, probably a, a, a 2 out of 10. I didn't get that dot. But clearly it's nonlinear. So the question asks, based on your graph, do you believe linear regression is appropriate? So I just read a sentence. Linear regression model is not appropriate. There is a clear nonlinear pattern in the scatter plot. And there you go. That was it. Put a title, label. Points. I guess we're good to go. That was number what? Number one from 2010. Man, if you get one of those questions, that is easy peasy. Good luck to you.